Now let's install some libraries, shall we? Um, here we are. If I just list the directory above, you'll see that uh, in libs sources I have laypack minus 3.8.0. That's uh, one of our kingpins for libraries. You'll see in this directory we've also got icepack and linpack. Now the thing about these two things is that um, linpack and icepack uh, used to do linear algebra and eigenvector eigenvalue problems and they've both been superseded by LAPAC and 3.8.0 is the latest one. So here we are in the source directory and we have a make file and I'm just going to do cp make dot ink dot example make dot ink if I do vim make file we'll see that the first thing we want is blastlib now linpack icepack and lapack all rely on a set of routines called BLAS which stands for basic linear algebra software so we're going to start off before we do anything else by compiling this particular library we want BLAS not C BLAS we are only going to be interested in the Fortran versions of these things make BLASLib and you can see that is using gfortran and it's using the minus o2 optimization switch uh, we could replace that with minus g if we wanted to be able to step in to our blast routines using the dbx debugger but we're just going to do it with minus o2 optimization and assume that we won't be wanting to step into anything with debugger we can always recompile the library if ever we need to do it there we are it's all done now cd blast uh, cd src uh, ls minus l star a and we can see libref blast dot a okay there we are we have libref blast dot a in the LAPAC directory. Well I'm going to make a slight diversion and that diversion is going to be into machine constants. Uh, these are used by all kinds of software including LINPAC, ISPAC, uh, Slatec and so on. So let's start off by saying welcome to the machine uh, by which I mean these three programs. Well, we've got Pi Machine as well. Four programs. I've put them all into a little tiny library called Machine. And the reason I do that is because you quite often have different versions of these things coming with different bits of code and you end up with all kinds of copies of these things all over your machine. Uh, and it gets a bit difficult to keep track of. Uh, these modern ones are rather different from the ones that I remember. For instance, if I go to D1 machine, which gives you double precision machine constants, it will tell you that this version adapts automatically to your machine, or it will mostly. It will certainly adapt nicely to your PC. Yes, if we have all of them in the same little library, we can be sure that we're getting the correct integer, real or double precision constants that are machine dependent uh, that your programs may need. So all I've done is gfortran uh, minus c star dot o. I think I used minus o to um, optimization switch for some weird reason. I don't think that'll make any difference. Anyway, uh, so that gives us all the object files and then this will give us uh, our archive file 
and this one will give us our DLLs and import libraries. Uh, I have two empty directories waiting for them. Yes, you can see them here. Uh, my DLLs and my libs. That's where the libraries that I compile in my space are going to go. And uh, that's what we're going to use. So I've built those libraries and now if we go to my DLLs you'll see we've got the import library as well as the definition file and the DLL in there and if we go to my libs we've got libmachine.a in there. Now when you specify a library that you want to link uh, to how does the machine find it? Well let's have a look here in the control panel and the usual system security system advanced environment variables now you can see what I've done here is I've introduced a new environment variable called library path on other systems it might be LD underscore capital L capital D underscore library path instead of library path but if you're using MinGW on Windows it is definitely library path and LD underscore library path will not be recognized so what I've done here is specified where to look for libraries uh, I can add to this later uh, obviously uh, we don't need uh, these my DLLs and my libs in the path directory at all. We do need it in the library path. So once you've got that set uh, and you link to any library that's living in my DLLs or my libs, uh, the compiler uh, GCC or GFortran or whatever will find the libraries. So we've got uh, librefblast, uh, that's the compilation stage for librefblast are written into a little file called blastcomp.bat and I've adapted that to blastcomp2.bat and put in the usual gfortran minus shared minus fpig and we've got librefblast dll as well as the import library and the definition file. You might have spotted that we'd actually run this earlier uh, but never mind about that. Okay we've we've used those batch files to compile the libraries and we've moved them. So if we go to this PC and the C drive we can see that in my DLLs we now have the export definition file as well as the DLL and the import library and if we go to my libs we've got librefblast in there as well. So that's the plus done now we can move on to layback proper. Well now we're going to do make layback lib and it's the usual gfortran minus two minus f recursive and this will go on for ages so we'll put it on pause and here we are finally we'll just do a notepad I'll get rid of that from the uh, blast library and then there you are you can see it's huge there's our ARCR control C and then we'll save that we're going to copy that list of object files and we'll do notepad lapcomp 2bat there's the list of object files uh, we don't need a ran lib statement and that's going to be lib layback we want to, to distinguish the DLL like that Libblayback, TLL, and 
Okay, the definition file. We'll just do control C there, and then we'll just get rid of that ARCR and we'll add minus L machine minus L ref plus and we'll get rid of those lines and then save and then more lap comp to that. There it all is. This time we're going to go to SRC and we'll see all the object files copy and lapcomp2. Oh that's a lack of a minus there and a WL and it's compiled ls star dll ls minus l libstar and there it all is that's today and that's the time so now copy libstar c colon slash my dls and or c colon slash my dls plus there we are we have our layback export definition file um, the dll and the import library there and lib machine and lib plus lib layback dot a c colon libs okay that should be there now lib layback dot a machine so that's three libraries done so we have the blast library and the layback library all installed.